Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to GFD Traders Espresso with me, Dyerson Charles, because today is the 9th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a quick quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, um, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we uh, jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page, which we update as well on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. Now then, <clears throat> um, just a quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Let me just quickly refresh refresh this page. Um, so, of course, the number continues to grow. We're getting closer to now uh, one and a half uh, million of inf total recorded infections. U.S. managed to overcome the 400,000 barrier. Um, and for now, Italy and Spain are leading the way in terms of uh, total deaths. Um, so, um, and as we can see, UK is kind of uh, in in fourth place in terms of that. Now then, um, of course, the situation is not getting better here for now. Maybe just slightly, but still, it's uh, it's on the same uh, route higher. Um, so for now, there's it seems that there's no stopping in the um, in the amount of infections, and uh, well, Europe and and the US are leading are uh, leading that way for now. So in terms of the markets now. Uh, the markets are actually um, feeling okay-ish for now, I would say. Um, now, looking at the Nikkei here, and uh, uh, Nikkei is currently trading slightly in the red. Uh, we still have around half an hour to go. I mean, uh, the time I'm doing this recording here, so we still have about half an hour until the market will close. Um, so probably when you're going to see this video, the, uh, the Nikkei will be closed already, but um, at the moment here, it is still open and it's currently running in slight negative zone um, so uh, the from the technical side uh, looking at this daily chart you can see that um, after kind of uh, reversing here from this little territory right here from the uh, 17,646 territory it kind of re it kind of traveled higher and is now very close to the near near the highs of the near the high of the 25th of March which is around the 19,564 um, zone so I've previously when I was covering Nikkei I've talked about this level and uh, this is still the level for us to watch after after a break of which we could consider some uh, some more upside at least a little bit not much uh, but probably only only up until here somewhere so again guys for now uh, yep be very careful be very cautious um, keep your eyes on some of these obstacles of course uh, the psychological 20,000 zone somewhere around here uh, which could come into play and could in a way stall the uh, the price temporarily but if the 20,000 level if the 20,000 level is seen just as just as a simple obstacle on on the way higher uh, for the bulls then yep the next target to consider is around the 20,834 territory roughly around here marked by the low of the 2nd of March um, around here we do have the 100 EMA shown as the green line here and the 200 EMA on uh, uh, the shown as the black line on the daily charts which could in a way provide some uh, a bit of additional resistance so again guys for now all long story short all eyes are on this barrier if we do get a nice uh, break above this maybe not today maybe tomorrow uh, then yes we could aim for higher levels um, in terms of the downside pretty straightforward um, well actually not very straightforward we are looking at this level here 
uh, the lowest point of 2018. Um, a drop below this and a drop below the 21 day EMA here could do the trick here for more sellers and we could see this one sliding um, sliding back down here uh, towards the low um, towards the low of the 3rd of April uh, or I should say the current lowest point of April near the 17,646 level that I've mentioned previously. Uh, jumping against the German DAX now here uh, the situation is um, well it's it's okay I would say um, so yesterday I talked about this one and what I was saying that as long as this let's say for example this index continues to trade above this uh, 10,280 zone uh, which is the lowest point of 2018 or if it let's say if it breaks that level and drops lower as long as it remains above the upside support line then yes we will continue targeting the upside now looking at the cash index right now we can see that the price is now back tra tra well traveling uh, back up here and it's currently uh, sitting at around somewhere around uh, 10,420 30 zone so basically kind of uh, jumped a little bit here not much of course um, of course course the the main obstacle to watch out for is this high the high of this week uh, the current high of this week near the 10,590 but if that gets broken then yes it could travel further north for now looking at the cash index we are a little bit more bullish than bearish however be very careful near this obstacle near the current highest point of this week and but if that gets broken then yep uh, higher levels could be met in terms of the downside now the further we move uh, to the right, probably you now. Previously, I talked about this 9,141 zone. Now, of course, this level still remains uh, of, of huge importance to us. Um, however, uh, given that we are shifting now a little bit higher, uh, we can actually say that if the um, if the, the in the index drops below that uh, breaks this upside line and, and falls below the uh, psychological 10,000 territory now this is where um, it could become quite interesting for the sellers again of course don't get me wrong this little territory here that I've mentioned previously I was talking about this one as more of a neutral territory however if we do get a drop below the 10,000 zone then well we could consider a bit of a slide here towards this area here this 9,141 um, so basically this could still be a nice decent move here um, and initially we will target the 9461 zone which previously acted as a fantastic area of support here um, but and then after that we will take it lower however like I said uh, given that it managed to already move a little bit further north uh, we can now say that this level here could become that level to watch the 10,000 zone could become that level to watch um, in order uh, to kind of aim lower levels to, uh, for lower levels if we get a break below it um, so that's why guys for now be very careful watch watch your levels and let's see how this is gonna play out uh, FTSE 100 now here, uh, of course, the same situation remains uh, as I've talked about this yesterday. I mean, uh, what I was saying that we need to see a nice good break above the 5,815-16 zone before we could uh, consider a uh, uh, some higher levels. However, you can see that the the index is currently stuck here. Um, so we're, to be honest, we're still waiting for that move. Looking at the cash index right now, it is currently uh, balancing. Mm, the cash index is currently balancing around the 5717-18 zone. Um, don't get me wrong, it's getting closer to this barrier, but as I said, we need to see that confirmation break first before we could consider some higher levels here. So that's why, guys, for now, be very careful, be very cautious, and uh, yep, uh, continue monitoring the price action. Um, Ethereum. So um, here, here the situation is uh, still a little bit difficult I would say so yesterday we had a nice push higher it drifted a little bit more to the north however didn't reach the um, the high of Tuesday um, and uh, this morning we're seeing a bit of a decline here the the price got held near the 100 EMA here on the daily chart so in a way um, in a way, for now, we, we need to probably, well, it's, it's a little bit tricky here. I mean, the, the thing is that um, 
on one hand it is trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 19th of February on the other hand it's it's still balancing above the um, uh, above this upside line taken from the low of the 13th of March so overall we're kind of stuck in this uh, in this little pattern here um, it's not even a triangle to be honest it's just it's stuck between these lines and it's kind of it's coiling up here um, now we overall we remain neutral because in a way f in order for us at least to consider some uh, medium term uh, extensions to either direction here we need to see a break through one of these uh, lines for now we're not seeing that we're just seeing some sort of activity here inside this um, inside this area so that's why overall we will remain neutral and uh, we need to wait for a break through one of these lines for now we're not seeing that so yep uh, probably guys uh, if you uh, of course if you're looking at something short term now you can see here the uh, the crypto is getting into a squeeze a little bit here and uh, yep basically it's nowhere right now it's just kind of stuck here and it's not really interesting because for the buyers um, buyers are still cautious because maybe the uh, the price could get a, get a hold up near this downside line but the bulls um, are also cons kind of remaining cautious because um, yes we are still above the subside line but we are still below this downside line so and that's why uh, yep the, uh, but the bears are um, are looking for uh, this our opportunity maybe to short from here if this uh, crypto gets a hold up near this downside line so basically that's a little bit like nowhere's the the crypto right now is in nowhere's land um, no one's land and uh, yep it's just stuck here and so we're waiting uh, to see who's gonna out pull the rope um, uh, either it's gonna be the bulls or the bear so so we're now just we're, we're just observing this one uh, WTI oil so of course big day for uh, oil um, and all the oil traders um, today we have the uh, OPEC plus meeting uh, where Saudi Arabia and Russia will be uh, trying to, to um, negotiate um, a, a potential uh, cut in uh, in oil production however of course we're not going to speculate on this too much what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the outcome so for now from the technical picture and this is what I was talking about yesterday that as long as this barrier continues to hold the 26.08 zone that's the lowest point of 2016 as long as it continues to hold and it continues to play as a nice area of resistance this could still lead to the downside however as you can see the um, uh, the the commodity now is pushing higher it's it it kind of is balancing around this level here so um, of course this raises concerns about uh, a potential move lower so in a way what we're gonna do here is how we're gonna look at this is um, we're gonna keep an eye on the high of uh, last week which is roughly around the 29.11 zone a nice good push above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and we could start targeting higher levels in terms of the down Downside, we need to see probably drop below the current low of this week, which is around the 23.58 zone, roughly around here, guys. Um, and then, yes, we could uh, aim for lower levels for now. Uh, for now, yes, we will remain um, remain cautious and probably neutral and, uh, well, we'll wait for the outcome from the OPEC meeting. And don't get me wrong, we might miss out on a huge spike or a huge drop. Um, however, it's, it's a 50-50 coin toss here, guys, so that's why uh, wait for the outcome and then we can react and see what we can do with it. Um, jumping into AUDUSD, so here the uh, situation is... Uh, as I said yesterday, so basically the the pair managed to close a daily candle above this barrier, above the 0 0.6220 uh, territory, um, and uh, is that? Yep, yeah, sorry, 0.6214 territory, and uh, now it's kind of uh, balancing above this area still. So in a way, there's still p potential move, a possible move here for to the upside for for AUD USD. Again, we'll remain very careful and cautious. Um, and uh, yep, for now, yes, we are leaning more towards the upside. Uh, but don't get me wrong, you always need to have your stop loss in place just in case this suddenly reverses to the downside. And in these market conditions right now, I mean anything can happen so that's why guys for now yes we are aiming for the upside a little bit here uh, only up until this downside line taken from the high of the 1st of January 
but of course we'll have like a, a, a very careful stop loss just in case this decides to reverse sharply and drops uh, lower um, and uh, moves back down here towards this area right here near the uh, psychological 0 0.60 zone so keep your eyes on that one. Um, USD CAD so something to keep an eye on today um, so we do have some uh, of course apart from the um, the oil um, this this OPEC plus meeting um, we do have some data coming out from uh, United States and uh, Canada so of course the the main focus will fall today on the United States in terms of the initial in, initial jobless claims to see if we managed to hit a new record or not um, and in Canada, the main focus will fall on the employment change number, uh, the unemployment number itself, of course. So, yep, that's going to be quite interesting. And uh, we'll see how this is going to perform. Um, now, if, of course, oil strengthens and uh, we see some good numbers from Canada, uh, then, well, I mean, we could see this one uh, drifting uh, drifting lower. Now, let me just quickly jump into a four-hour chart on this one, guys. So, uh, so basically, what we're looking here for is a drop below this territory here. A nice, good, strong move below the 1.3986 uh, because at, at the moment, you can see that we are forming somewhat of a, a descending triangle. Of, of course, according to all the TA rules, these ten, these patterns tend to break to the downside. However, uh, we'll be very careful and cautious because we've seen this happening the opposite way several times. So, yep, guys, for now, uh, be very careful here. Uh, wait for a break either through this uh, this area of support here. Um, let me just jump back into a daily chart. Uh, so, either break, wait for a drop below the um, the 1.3986 zone and then we could aim for lower levels um, or wait for a break of this down, uh, downside line or the upper side of the uh, descending triangle and then we could consider some higher levels up until here up until this barrier the 1.4325 zone that I've mentioned previously because uh, still a break above this level is uh, f required for us more because this is the level after which we could get a little bit more uh, comfortable with higher levels um, so yep that's why if we do get a push above the downside line then there is potential for this one to move towards the 1.4325 uh, zone so but again it's closer to the uh, to the lower side of this uh, this triangle um, so yep let's see if the uh, if the bears can dominate this pair today um, today or tomorrow but again because it's, today we have some in, in, in interesting data coming out so uh, in regards to oil and uh, and of course in regards to initial jobless claims in the US and employment change in in Canada so you have to keep your eyes on this pair um, US, US dollar against the Turkish Lira I mean something that you probably don't look at very often but just wanted to quickly run by you this one so we're approaching the um, the highest point of um, August uh, is that correct? Let me just uh, no, so, sorry. the The highest point of um, August thirtieth, um, two thousand and eighteen, which is roughly around the six point eighty three ninety six zone. So, or in other words, you can round it up towards the six point eighty four mark. So we are pro we are approaching this level. The big question here is can it reach this um, or will it actually fail to move higher and we'll see a nice reversal to the downside? So. For now, um, I would say uh, don't rush into this yet. Um, if we do get a push higher, keep your eyes on the 6.84 zone. Um, that's the, like I said, the highest point of August. Uh, sorry, the uh, the highest point of August 30th, uh, 2018. Um, and we may get a bit of a, a hold up here, um, but if we don't, then yes, of course, a break above this could lead towards the highest point of August. Um, that's roughly around let me just put this one on the chart that's roughly around the 7.20 uh, level um, of course we'll keep an eye on this one but first let's keep an eye on this 6.84 zone and uh, if we get a hold up here then we may see a bit of a retracement however as I said that if this by any chance starts reversing earlier to the downside uh, for us to get comfortable with lower levels we would like to see a drop below this upside line so it's a bit of a tentative one but 
nevertheless this upside line could play out nicely here um, if we get a break of this upside line and we see a drop below the 6.61 territory somewhere around here then yes we could lead it could lead to deeper uh, extensions to the downside so guys very quite interesting pair um, but uh, the, the main focus right now is on this uh, the high of the, uh, August 30th 2018 GBP Euro, a quick update on this. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, uh, but what I was talking about this one recently and uh, what I was saying that keep your eyes on this barrier here, the 1.1440. As you can see right now, the pair is approaching, um, is approaching that level. <clears throat> and the big question here is, can we get, can we see a pop above this? So uh, we're keeping a close eye on this one and uh, we're waiting for a nice good uh, pop above this because overall for now it's still in, on the short term uptrend. Um, it is built above the 200 EMA, oh, actually it's above all of its EMAs here on the four hour chart. So basically all this is still looking quite positive. However, if, just to kind of complete that positivity, we need this nice good push above the 1.1440. This would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep, uh, higher levels could be met. Um, in terms of the downside, the same idea remains as previous. Uh, we need to see a drop below the 1.1305 zone in order to kind of consider some deeper extensions uh, to the downside. So keep your eyes on that one. And finally, Euro USD. So here, not much has changed to be honest, and this is what I talked about yesterday. Basically, all this territory here will be somewhat of a neutral one for us, and you can see that the pair, the pair right now is just kind of stuck here and uh, not doing anything. Um, we need to see a push above the uh, high of this week, the current high of this week, which is around the 1.0926 zone, roughly around there. Yep, um, and then we could at least start considering some higher levels, but um for now guys uh for now yes uh be very careful here uh be very cautious and uh keep your eyes on this barrier um <clears throat> in case this bear decides to drift a little bit lower still the more comfortable level for us after which we could consider the downside is the 1.0777 zone so as i've mentioned already many times in my previous videos about this level so yep that's the lowest point of february as well then <clears throat> we had a nice hold up here last week so that's why this area becomes a quite important one to watch and um, yep wait for a drop below this level and then this would confirm a fourth coming lower low and uh, yep uh, slightly deeper extensions to the downside could be possible so guys i hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening so if you want to uh, join me, or should I say, if you want to catch my video later on, uh, my my traders tea time uh, around around 13, 15 GM tea time. Um, so yep, guys, I hope you found this useful and I really appreciate your all your views and all your likes and, um, and all your comments, guys. Um, so I really, like I said, really appreciate that. Um, kind of gives me a little boost, <laughs> more a moral boost, a good moral boost. Um, um, but yeah, thank you very much, guys, for all your support. Um, so yeah, I'll see you later, or shall I say, catch my video later, third, around 13, 15 GMT time, Traders Tea time. Um, so yeah, bye-bye.